Hi, you're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com, part of Tequila Aficionado Media. I am Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That person right there, my cohort. Rick Levy in San Diego. Rick, I don't know about you, but I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> we're, Rick and I were off camera talking about how we're fish out of water tonight. Um, we have been sampling and trying to dissect Sierra del Norte whiskey. We should give you some background whiskey, on this. this. Whiskey is, from Oaxaca. Whiskey from Oaxaca. We should break this down for you and tell you this is coming from the folks who make Scorpion Mezcal. Doug French, if you've read about him on, on, on Tequila Aficionado, you know that he is also a small batch um, distiller, but he, he is growing his own agave rather than trying to compete with deeper celebrity pockets who are making mesquila or whatever the hell, <laughs> they, want to, whatever the hell they want to call it or, or industrialized mezcal like Zignum. So, uh, you know, in the meantime, he, uh, he's distilling whiskey from heirloom corn. And a lot of folks, Rick didn't even know this, but I did a little research and I found out that Oaxaca, Mexico, is the cradle of maize, of corn. You call it corn, we call it maize. And, uh, and so it, it's, it's, they, they've, they've pinpointed it that that's, this is where it came from. So naturally, there, there is a heritage, a, 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 a legacy of making whiskeys in Mexico. And, um, but we're still lost because, you know, Rick, Rick has you know some some bourbon whiskey background. I have more of the American you know the the the, the good old fashioned names we can name, you know like Jack Daniels and Jim Beam and all that, or even Wild Turkey for that matter. But um, they weren't my favorites. I and we were talking off camera, um, and you you mentioned um, Rick that you have a bottle of Maker's Mark. You have several whiskeys in your in your in your home bar. I have none. The last one that I actually had that I really enjoyed was a Canadian blended whiskey uh, called Pendleton. And I really liked it because it was much lighter than, than some of the, you know, even some of the Jim, Jim Beams or, or, or Jack Daniels. And so I enjoyed those. And it didn't occur to me until, until after we had done the first tasting of the yellow corn version uh, of Sierra del Norte that this is more like a like a Canadian whiskey. It's it's more like the blended Canadian whiskey style, I guess. But it's it's his own style because he's using French oak. So uh, and native species of corn. Yeah. And you know, it's really interesting that uh, you know, they are uh, they're they're providing work for the growers of these heirloom species, helping to keep the strains alive. Especially since you know corn is under so much pressure now from the uh, industrial GMO uh, species. Yeah, these are not GMO, folks. This is real corn. Uh, if you if you follow us on any of the social media, for instance, uh, Facebook, uh, Doug French has been posting pictures of of the corn, you know, and 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 it, they, they they photograph so beautifully you know the dark kernels the yellow kernels a white kernel and very colorful very colorful and and i, and I often wondered myself what that tastes like cuz you know all we know is popcorn um, maybe, <laughs> maybe sweet corn a little white corn that tends to be you know sweeter um, but I, I what what really struck us when we when we tasted the the yellow corn was that we could actually taste the corn and that's highly unusual for, for any whiskey, even though you know in your mind that they make it out of corn. But you never really taste it. You, you always taste it's, it's like you, some of them you, taste like you're chewing a two by four. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so tonight we, we're going to try the, the, I think I, we opened the white corn. Now, comparatively, it's a little bit darker than, than the yellow version. And you can tell by the wax. These are these are sealed in wax, um, so it's comparatively darker. Even though 
Um, even though these are aged approximately nine months in French oak barrels. Yeah, we'll there. see. I think and you can pick that up. The darker one is the white corn. Right, which is the one. And the lighter one is the yellow corn. corn. Exactly. And, and it's kind of nice because tonight we get to use the Glen Cairns for what they're really made for. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're tasting whiskeys. There's a beautiful color, though, on this one, Rick. This is a, you know, a little bit more of a deeper, deeper amber color. Yeah, you're getting some red, nice red hues there. Yeah. This is a this is Glen Karen Copita, and and Rick is using a a, a Stossel uh, nosing glass, which um, Ooh. which the folks at uh, uh, at Chisholm Trail were really nice enough to to send to us. Um, at, hey. Tequila has has outgrown the the usual regal glass, and and since we have a supply of, of whiskey nosing glasses, we decided to go ahead and use go there and see what we get. And I think that's a that's a that's a malted malt glass. That's a that malt glass. Malt glass. Oh wow. Now, this Copita glass tends to to concentrate the nose a lot a lot sharper. Yeah, and uh, you know these are forty five percent alcohol, so they're ninety proof. So, uh, you know, you do you do get alcohol on the nose. So yes. Opening up. Yeah. Um, for the sake of transparency, they they are uh, eighty five percent heritage corn, fifteen percent malted barley. So that's that's what's being distilled uh, into these whiskeys. All right, now in their notes, they say the nose is slightly sweet and fruity, uh, with vanilla, almond, and subtle black squid ink. <laughs> have you ever had black squid ink? No, I have not. I have. So that, I can. That I can note tell you. Comes out of left I can open. tell you that. I, yeah, right. <laughs> I can tell you that I have. Uh, funny story. My mom used to make, um, used to make what we called black rice, um, and this was this was rice that she would cook with squid in it, pulpo, and um, the smell was horrendous. It was it was <laughs> awful. It was just really off-putting, and you're in the rice. You know, in those in those days, it was just white rice, right? And would would be would be black. It would come out just black, and apparently it was a delicacy. We didn't think so. My sister and myself just <laughs> never acquired a taste for for black rice. Uh, so I I have had it. I have smelled it, and I am not a fan. <laughs> I have had I have had black pasta that was uh, you know it was uh, colored with squid ink. Oh no, kidding. Okay, did it have any residue smell on it? Yeah, I don't have any particular recollection. Okay. <laughs> Very sweet on the nose. I'm really loving this nose right now. I'm still getting a lot of alcohol. Now, the, the notes... Um... I would say that it's more. Um, I, I would say that it is more more barrel, you know. Again, French oak versus virgin American white oak, you know. I, I think this French oak, it, it, and I'm, I, I if I'm wrong, they'll tell me. But I believe that this is a used French oak barrel. I would imagine that they are. He's aging them about nine months. Um, I'm getting, getting some really pleasing barrel notes off of this. I'm not pulling out the corn as much. Yeah, me neither. As I was in the yellow corn. I I do get that 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 real subtle squid ink. It's a little inky, just just slightly. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the barrel is showing up on the palate as well. It's, um, it feels a bit more like a traditional whiskey than the, uh, than the other did. It says that you're, 
there there are tones on the palate of um, of uh, like like uh, green apple. Um, it's got a really much longer finish than the than the yellow corn. Mm -hmm. um, I get more spiciness. You know, there's a little bit more heat, uh, cinnamon. Uh, you can't really say white pepper because it's not, you know, it's not in the corn, and it would it, it, there's, so it would have to be a, a spiciness. Now we were talking about. Um, I, I thought that the 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 yellow corn was a little bit lighter. Um, you know, there, it's not so much in your face. And it may be a great gateway to introducing people into whiskeys. This is more of what I'm kind of used to, though. Yeah. This one has a, a much, a much harder punch to it. Um, and on the palate, it's not bad at all. I I really like that that fruit overtone, whether it's pear or apple. It's something, you know, yeah. it's something. Uh, it's, it's I'm getting a, a touch, touch of butteriness as well from the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that the, the the spiciness that that we get. Um, it's a it's a hot cinnamon spice for me. Yeah, I would agree. So um, I like this. Now we were talking Pleasing, about. Though. It's a nice finish. finish. Yes. Yeah, it's very you know it's tantalizing. Yeah, I I like this this one. Now see, the first one was kind of like a blended Canadian whiskey to me. You know, it's a it's a lot lighter. It's easier on the palate. I'm surprised, you know, when I remember the first time I bought a, I, I bought a bottle of Pendleton, which, which comes out of Oregon. It's Canadian blended whiskey out of Oregon, believe it or not. <laughs> and it's really good. But man, you could go through a whole bottle without even blinking. You know, it's, it's like, it's like a, your favorite tequila. You just keep going back to it and back to it and back yeah. to it. And before you know it, it's three quarters gone. So, but I like this one. This one. Yeah. It has a strong presence. Yeah, this one's got the yellow. Other, you know, the yellow is, is very, you know, in, in tequila terms, I would say it's more fruit forward. Mm. I would say uh, Alex would say stuff like, you know, it's got good structure. I, I think it I, I think it. Uh, uh, I, 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 again, you walk a thin line when you age anything in a French oak barrel like the aftertaste now. I'm getting a little bit of the char, maybe. I'm getting a little bit of the, maybe the the the, uh, like a like a dark chocolate or a cocoa. Yeah. Or, yeah. I'm getting that, that. You know, uh, coffee and chocolate. Yeah. 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 Kind of. Yeah, and it's and it's on the back of your palate. It's just kind of the, just just the yeah. residue, you know. I like this now. Now, whereas the first version, you might not want to mix in a cocktail. Would you put this in a cocktail? Yeah, you know, I think you could you could you could set this neat. It would mix very well. I I think there's enough character in it to really to really come through and compete with some of the other hardier mess uh, hardier whiskeys that you're um, that you're used to, you know. Yeah. Uh, so far, this is one of my favorites, man. This is really not, but I don't, you know, but I'm not getting any any corn, like I did with yeah. the first one. So I kind of miss that. I wish. I wish I could get more of that. But then again, it's white corn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wow. I like it. It's full bodied. It's got a it, it's it's a full body. I I I like it. I like the, this would be, you know, I, I know Rick doesn't, but I do. This would be a great cigar whiskey. It would. It I would stand up to I a, see that. Uh, it would stand yeah. up to a great cigar. This is a good after dinner it whiskey. Um, I like this a lot. I am, I am really digging this one. Really, really, I, pff, wow. Who knew? <laughs> you know, yeah. I guess it's good for us to to explore, you know, to open wide your palate. In my case, you know, it's 18, 19 years of if it wasn't rum, it was all tequila and and now mezcals. So to to go to go back and, and revisit some whiskeys um, or even 
or even uh, like I say, I've got a bottle of, of Luna Sul that's aged in, in rye barrels from Heaven Hill. And it makes me want to go back and try it now because I, it's almost, it's virtually full. Uh, I was never able to get Heaven Hill to send us another sample to any of our tasters. So I'm just sitting on that, on that bottle, but I know it's been very popular. Obviously Heaven Hill is a big whiskey producer. Um, and, and, you know, now they age their own tequilas in their, in their own whiskey barrels, which boy, there's a, there's a, there's a money maker for you <laughs> right there. So, um, I love this finish. This is, this is more of like a good mezcal finish. I like the smokiness. I, I like the char. I like that bitter chocolate, cocoa, you know, tobacco coffee. I think, I think we're getting yeah. it. And it, and it's really, I think it stands up and, and maybe this one, you, you would put a, put a, uh, put a, uh, put it in a, you know, with an ice cube in it or something. Yes. Wow. Okay. Very impressed. How does yeah. it taste out of, how does it taste out of the, 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 the malt glass? Is there any difference? Are you still getting the, the alcohol? The alcohol has uh, is opened up a bit. But, you know, frankly, I think the, uh, the high proof is starting to hit me. Oh, well, you know, this is, this is whiskey. It's a whole other animal, you know, and, it, and it's, it's corn liquor. So, yeah, we got to be careful with that. You might have to spit some of it out, sadly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I like it. I want to nominate it for Brand of Promise in the in the in the heritage yeah, legacy category. I think is a really worthy um, uh, to to look for. Um, you know, it, I now I think that if you're a, a whiskey kind of person, this is this one here. This would be something really interesting to check out. I Whereas think so. maybe the yellow corn would be like an interesting curiosity to explore or expand. Exactly, or, or like I said, if you're if you're into blended Canadian whiskeys, they tend to be a bit lighter on the palate. You know, you're you're from the, the great white north. You might want to go for the for the yellow corn. Uh, I like it. I liked it that I could taste the corn in it. You know, this one not so much, but I also like the the, the hardiness and the full body of this one. So I, I hey, I, I think it's a worthy brand of promise and really really worth looking for. Um, and if you're a mezcal producer, a small batch, and you're, you're watching this translated in Spanish somewhere on YouTube, and you're making whiskey, send us some. Because, you know, I'm game. I really am. I, I would rather keep these guys busy and, and keep the heritage alive than have them sitting around waiting for something to grow, you know, in six to yeah. eight years, and then, and then not, ever, not ever have a... Uh, something else to, to talk about. Um, or, well, you know, here we're all about supporting the artisanal producers. So. Yes, that's what we do here. That's our take on uh, Sierra del Norte. This is the, the white corn whiskey from the makers of Scorpion Mezcal. Very, very, Doug French has really done a great job with, with this, and, and uh, I, I like this one. If you're, a cigar, if you're a cigar guy, this would be the, this would be the one to do. Um, you know, remember, you have to make that last up here. <laughs> yeah, I know that's true. I can't I can't go through it, uh, and I probably won't. I'm you know it'll go back up on my shelf. But um, that's again our take on this. Subscribe to our YouTube channel down below, or you know, point touch and touch and point some of the other suggested. Uh, I don't know where they're going to appear. Somewhere around my head, probably. <laughs> Uh, and stay with us because we're going to taste the final, um, the final version, the final varietal, uh, the, the dark, the black corn. I can't wait for that. I'm Mike Fair Morales <laughs> here in Rick San Lovey. Antonio, and that's Rick in San Diego. As we like to say uh, here at Tequila Aficionado Tomar.